Okay, I want to explain a little bit about the design of the motor. Several things here, a couple of things here. It's a coreless coil. And in other words, the coil doesn't have a core. It doesn't have an iron core in the center. Uh, usually it's made out of laminated sheets of uh, steel, ferrous metal, and it has the wire wrapped around it. This not having the core in it, it doesn't have a hysteresis curve, not as bad. Uh, and in other words, you have time for it to change from the magnetism going one direction to flipping over back the other direction. It's not as bad. It's, it's a much lower time because it's just air. Um, so you have sweat, faster switching times available. Cogging, cause, cogging is caused whenever a magnet goes past that uh, iron core and it's attracted to it. So it's especially noticeable at low speeds. And uh, so you feel this jerking effect. It's like, it's like click, 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 click. So that is um, eliminated also with a uh, air coil. And there are companies that actually build motors with uh, air coils and even pan pancake motors like this. Uh, so it's, it's not like I'm doing anything new or doing anything radical. But you have a uh, stator. Oh, I'll get that in a second. We've got a stator in the center with the coils. And then you've got rotors on either side with the magnets. Okay. So if you use a Halbach array on the rotors, what that does is it maximizes it uh, focuses the flux on one side, it minimizes it on the other side. And it is a uh, quite interesting phenomenon. And you can see this uh, on videos where they use the uh, ferrite uh, dust or um, the uh, even the, the liquid ferrite materials and they uh, powder it around, you know, and you can see it doing this. It has uh, quite an amplification effect on the magnetic field on one side, so it diminishes it on the other. Well, here I've got a uh, coil, a stator with rotors on either side, and the thing is, with uh, stator design like this, in a regular motor, you'll have your magnets going all the way around the outside, and you'll have a stator on the inside with the coil. And so it's only utilizing one side. So it, um, the other side is just, in my opinion, just wasted. So this uses, utilizes both sides of that coil. Okay. That being said, then the rotors, a lot of people for the magnets, they like to arrange them like this to focus the flux uh, towards the coils. But the objective of this motor, one of the purposes behind this motor is so you can stack them. You can put another stator here and you can put another coil here and effectively doubling the uh, power output. Uh, does this work? In, in I don't know. I haven't tested it. I know it, it's a very sound theory. Okay. And you keep going. You can put another stator on here. And you can put another rotor on here and you can build this thing up. So if you buy a uh, vehicle, say, with uh, one stator and rotor set on it, then you want to modify your vehicle. You can just pop on another stator and rotor and you can use the same um, controller and just have external drivers and just literally plug and play. You add another stator, you plug in their, your drivers and you're ready to go because the halls only connect to one of the, um, doesn't even have to connect to the stator. It just has to detect the position of the rotor. So you've got your halls out here, hall sensors out here, 
and uh, so it makes it static, stackable. It makes it where it's expandable. So, uh, and that is my major objective into designing the motor like this. And that's why I'm using a coilless coil and I am not using haulback array and or uh, plates of metal or anything. I guess you know, that's another story altogether. But this is, this is the purpose of the design of this motor.